I had to break this video into two parts, so there will be a part two. Here we go with part one. Hello, lovely internet strangers. If you didn't watch my update video, then it's been a while. I am pleased to bring you the fourth episode of the Anti-Feminist Diaries, just to let you in on a little subtle joke I have going on for myself. The reason I'm always drinking tea in these videos is like a little jab at the sort of leftist Twitter, leftist YouTube, social justice warriors who always talk about spilling the tea. Glad we can share this little joke together. So reminder that these are in no chronological order. I've already talked about losing my friend over Anita Sarkeesian and a Tim Pool video, and I've talked about getting dumped for my political beliefs. So this story takes place both before getting dumped for my political beliefs and after. The story's complicated and it was emotionally painful and that's why I put off telling it for so long. I got dumped twice for different reasons. What I'd like to do with this story is to explore the difficulties surrounding female friendships, as well as the difficulties that I was facing as I made my ideological transition. So I met this friend in question during college. We had shared activities, we had shared friends, we had a lot of shared memories, we had shared feminism. Well, we were both feminists, but she was a black feminist and I was a white feminist because I look white. So I get to be a white feminist. I was never an activist-y feminist. I would aggressively reblog misandrous things. I was never a protest person. I didn't engage in like letter writing campaigns. I was a member of Voices for Planned Parenthood, but even that organization, it wasn't like I did anything super aggressive other than have like a table at like a sexual health fair or something. She was a bit more activist-y, but even in college, it wasn't like she was really engaged in hardcore activism beyond Tumblr, Twitter, etc. And the whole dynamic between us was, you know, I was like a white feminist, so if there's anything that had to do with black people, black women in particular, I didn't get to have an opinion, right? That wasn't my lane. She could talk about white people and how white people were the worst. White people, am I right? And there's no way for you as the white passing person to make any kind of pushback or comment. So we stayed friends after college. We would have like these phone conversations, long email exchanges. The other piece of context that becomes relevant now is that I dated someone in college, continued dating them for about a year after graduation, and then we broke up. Well, I broke up with him, stopped talking to him for a while. It was really painful to still be in contact, like I needed that break. So this was a person who was a soulmate. I was his muse. Like it was incredibly romantic. Like our whole story was just like something you'd see in Dawson's Creek or like a romantic comedy or something. I thought I was going to marry him. He was love of my life. And then it just, for like a lot of various reasons, like it didn't work out. About a year after that, he sent a package to me, which had something of mine and then like a letter. At the time, like it kind of weirded me out. And I told my friend on one of her phone calls about it. And then it came up that actually she'd been dating him for a month. And I was flabbergasted. I was in shock. I knew that they were friends because of me, but I had no idea they were even speaking to each other post-college, let alone dating for a month. Instead of like telling me along the way that she had started talking to my ex, there was just like all of a sudden, oh, by the way, I'm dating him for a month. Because we talked all the time about the guys in our life. It's not like I would have made her ask for permission. I don't really subscribe to the whole, you can't date other people's exes, but it's more like the secrecy. If you really think it's not a big deal, why weren't you just like, oh, I've been talking to this person a lot. Oh, I think I'm starting to like him. But no, there was none of that. So I was kind of like blindsided by the whole thing. And I'll be honest, I did not handle the situation particularly well at all. I have undergone a lot of personal growth since then, because this was back in early 2014. If I met five years ago me right now, I just want to slap her in the face, sit her down over pancakes and be like, we need to have a conversation. And the thing is, it's hard to reconstruct some of this because unfortunately, Unfortunately, I wasn't journaling at the time the way that I am now, and I guess I didn't really talk about it much because I looked through old chats. What I could piece together is that after I got over my shock, I got really pissed off. Then I ignored her for a couple months. Then I sent her a really mean email telling her how hurt I was, and I didn't know how I could trust her. A few weeks later, she came to the city, we met up, and we had a heart to heart, and we cleared the air, and we reconciled, and that felt really good. And then she told me like, 
a couple weeks later that actually while she was in the city that her and my ex broke up and I was like well that seems like we went through a lot for this to not work out maybe like six months later we're talking we're friends whatever then I find out that they're dating again and I really thought that it wasn't gonna work out but I was like whatever so he and I have our own like parallel story I guess which is only semi-relevant here like I said I stopped talking to him for a while he and I started talking again around when I found out they started dating and we'd hang out very infrequently things continued fine through most of like 2015 and I can see from my emails that the last email I have between me and my friend was in July of 2015 it's an email for me to her just like with a link like asking if she'd seen this and there's no reply from her so as far as I know like I sent the last email. Basically for the rest of 2015, it just seems like I didn't really reach out to her. I was like reading her Tumblr, but the back half of 2015 was really a bad time for me. Like I was dealing with a roommate who instead of going to see a therapist, she was just like using me as a free therapist. And I was dealing with my own anxiety and depression and like working through relationship issues. Things were really, really bad at work. And I wanted to quit like every day. And I would just come home and just like become catatonic, thinking about reaching out to people, especially someone like her, where it was was never like we would just shoot each other a quick text. It was always like we'd have a long phone call or we'd write long emails and it felt like so much cognitive effort to even try to think about doing that. Then in January, I'm like, oh, I should reach out to her. When I go to do that, <laughs> to check like her Facebook and her Twitter just to see like what's up. I find that she has defriended me on Facebook, blocked me from seeing her tweets on Twitter. And I was like, the fuck did I do? Like I was racking my brain. What could I have done? But it was a pretty clear signal. Like I don't like you anymore. Or like, I don't want to talk to you. Like this is a sign. No one does this accidentally. And especially not women. And so here's where I have to explain my philosophy on friendship. Which which is that for me, if we are friends at any point in our lives, unless I say to you, you're dead to me now, we're friends forever. It doesn't end. And the only thing it does is it changes. It transforms. There are periods in your life where you're closer because you're around all the time. And then once you move away, you have to manage those relationships differently. And people become different things to you and you communicate in different ways and you have different expectations with each other. So for me, not talking to her for several months was not not me saying, I don't care about you anymore. It was just me being lost in the quicksand of like my mental health and everything else going on in my life in my immediate vicinity. To my awareness, it's not like she texted me or emailed me or something and then I didn't respond. If I did, I certainly didn't do it on purpose. I know there was a point where I like destroyed my phone or lost it or whatever and like switched phones. So maybe like a text got lost somewhere. To be clear, it's not like she reached out to me and said, I haven't heard from you in a while it's really hurtful to me and you actually you know you didn't return that text and then I could be like oh my god I'm so sorry I didn't realize like I didn't mean to no there was no this is your last chance to be my friend because I think you fucked up message no no it was just like I'll defriend you on Facebook block you from seeing my tweets on Twitter I think she even changed her Tumblr URL so I couldn't read it but then I found it through someone else's Tumblr. So like I said, I had been in touch with my ex again and he reached out to me about getting drinks not long after I realized the whole defriending thing. It was super weird. I could tell he didn't want to be there even though he was the one that invited me out and I went out of my way to meet him and I was asking him all these questions about himself and he's just sitting there like answering them bare minimum answers and then finally I'm like, do you want to know about me at all? And then he was like, uh, she's mad at you, you know, and I'm like, oh, did she like send you? Are you here? her behalf is this just you like what the actual fuck he was like i think she'd still really like to hear from you well like i'm really mad at her because i didn't do anything and she's treating me like this like we've been friends for a really long time and this is how i get treated because i was dealing with my own shit and she didn't fucking once reach out to check on me to see how i was doing it took me a really long time to contact her i think that was like february of 2016 when i talked to him and then september of 2016 when I wrote to her. So not only did she never respond, 
to the long email that I wrote her, which basically said, you know, I'm sorry it took me so long to write, that I was really hurt by the way she just cut me out without saying anything, an explanation of like what I was dealing with at the time, and that I had been seeing on her Tumblr that she had been posting a lot about having anxiety and that as an extrovert with anxiety, and she was an extrovert with anxiety that like I understood and I understood if she didn't want to be friends anymore, but if she like needed someone to talk to, I was there for her and that like the door was always open that even if we're like 80 years old and she wants to try to rekindle a friendship, I'm still here, but I understand like she doesn't want to talk to me. So not only did she never reply to that, but she posted on her Tumblr and I quote, I had a falling out with a friend and they sent this long half-assed apology, which I haven't responded to. I mean, she's expecting an apology and I don't even know what the hell I was apologizing for. Not reaching out to her for the same length of time that she didn't reach out to me either? Why is that my burden to apologize for? So yeah, maybe it was a half-assed apology from her perspective. She was expecting me to like take all the blame and to shoulder all the emotional labor of keeping our friendship going, which apparently is what she feels like she was doing because she said, I just have all this anger and nowhere to put it. But for once, I'm taking my friend's advice and just letting it go. Everyone tells me to let it go all the time, but this is the only time it's warranted. Ha ha. It's hard, but I'm growing and moving forward and I don't need this person's negativity in my life. Well now, guess I'm just a negative Nancy. Now I can kind of like laugh about it or I have more of an emotional distance from it and I've come to terms with like the kind of person she is. But at the time, like it really, really hurt. It really hurt to have worked up the courage and been vulnerable and reached out. I mean, knowing that she might not write back, but for her not just to not write back, but to like anonymously drag me on Tumblr was really, really hurtful. So. At this point, I had just gotten dumped for like being a shitty friend, I guess. Not having the same friendship philosophy. I was looking back through, you know, all my old chats, all the source material for this video. I had made a comment to my partner that it was a good thing that didn't want to be friends with me anymore because I felt like we were really ideologically divergent and that I could deal with her beliefs, but she would see mine as an attack. And how prescient that was. I'm sorry for that long context, but it is relevant. And so as far as I knew, she's out there like, living her best life without my fucking negativity all up in it. So this was January of 2017, the Women's March. At this point, I was still using my real person Twitter, not my 8th Square Twitter, not my anonymous troll Twitter, to post things about politics. Nothing crazy, like sort of centristy, classical, liberal like stuff. One that was just legitimately like this dude cleaning up trash left behind by people at the Women's March, which I thought was really interesting because I looked at the Women's March website and one of their like key issues was, you know, the environment. Maybe there was one about flying feminists to the Middle East. Then I happened to be looking at uh, my ex-friend's Tumblr because look, okay, I'm a woman and as masculine of center as I am, we all internet stalk, okay? So I see this post on her Tumblr and I'm like, holy shit, this is about something that I retweeted. And I no idea she was still like checking out my Twitter. She posted, I saw the most ludicrous tweet about how we should fly women who march the Women's March to Palestine or the Middle East or something since the Women's March was a test run to real issues. I can't be bothered to look up the actual factual tweet, but of course that is some white Western hemisphere, eat your food because there are kids starving in Africa bullshit. There are kids starving right here in the US of A too, if we're keeping with that metaphor. It's also a fact, as well as the fact that Flint has been without clean water for over a thousand days, but all these whiny women should go where they are real proud Problems. You really can't compare the realities of marginalized people here to what's happening in the Middle East or use one over the other to shame people for speaking out against any injustice. I can truly only speak for myself, but as a black woman who lives in constant fear of getting killed by the police and then blamed for my own death, I feel like my issues are valid. White feminists, all feminists, all women, all people in general should seek for a better understanding of the conflicts in the Middle East and how an imperialist country like the United States is absolutely to blame. The US is a bully both at home and abroad, and we can't ignore that we're moving into a very terrifying time where all the rights we supposedly have now can be taken away. And we can't ignore that what's happening here doesn't have global consequences. We could very well have these real issues you're shaming us with really soon. This tweet and like-minded 
people retweeting it are also ignoring the fact that a lot of women in other countries either don't need or don't want our help. Because imperialism, you're shaming women marching by infantilizing foreign women with problems you probably don't comprehend your damn self? This tweet also ignores the fact that sister marches happen on every fucking continent. Again, they don't need or want us. We fucked up enough at home. So, she did not find my tweet amusing. And then I looked on Twitter and she had tweeted, apparently an ex-friend is out here tweeting alt-right nonsense, y'all. And then she has a gif of Mariah Carey saying, I don't know her. I make light of this situation, but I'm truly hurt. It seems like my former friend grew out of her feminist phase and I'm reminded that white passing in parentheses, well-off women have that option. But feminism isn't a game to me. This is my life and my life is at stake. I wish her well, but I grew out of that friendship well before she outgrew fighting for our rights and my life. Not the lives of women, not even like black women, before I stopped fighting for her life. And again, I remind you of what I said earlier, I was like never an activist. I was a Tumblr activist. When was I out there fighting for her rights or women's rights. Was I some great loss to the feminist movement? Because I really don't think that I was, to be quite honest. I mean, like I was a believer in my personality. I'm not really an activist. So the best part about this was her saying that I was white in parentheses passing. And then also that I was well off. Like I was well off because like my parents paid for college, I guess. But you know, I was working in publishing. I wasn't like making a fuck ton of money. I was just well off compared to her because I didn't like have student debt. I also didn't get like a gender studies degree. So there's that. But the white passing man, like, oh, you can acknowledge that I'm fucking Latina, you asshole. Really? Thank you. Thank you for that. Appreciated. I just appear white. I just get to walk among the white people like one of them. Now, again, I can laugh about it now, but at the time it was really like an experience that freaked me out because then I was like, oh, did she even see the tweets or did like one of our mutual friends tell her? Because this is a person who had already decided they didn't want to be my friend, but like this just makes me more scared that I'm going to start losing friends if I'm open about what I think think, what I believe. And this was also the true like nail in the coffin of our friendship for me because it took me like six, seven months to write to her. She hadn't like texted me being like, never talk to me again. But this was like the nail in the coffin, like nah, like she's like double done with you. Like maybe she was thinking about it. Nah, she thinks you're basically evil. So, so that happened. It's not like she then reached out to me and was like, hey, what the fuck is up with you? You're out here tweeting all this shit? No, she's just like tweeting about me covertly, whatever. I kind of thought that was like it, you know? Except that I would torture myself by still looking at her Twitter or Tumblr, you know, especially when certain things would happen in the news or whatever, and I'd be interested the black feminist take on something. And that was the easiest way I knew to access black Twitter, would just be to look at her Twitter. To be continued in part two. See you next week.